as needed, you're going to add stuff in. All right? Remember, simplicity is always a goal in web design. Uh, simplicity uh, that translates into ease of use is always a goal, a goal in web design. So if your mindset is to develop the bare bones version of the site first, and then we're going to add stuff in, that leads you sort of in the right path. Yes? I'm just going to play devil's advocate for a second and say if you take a look at it in terms of how you would write a paper, uh -huh. um, I would think that using progressive enhancement would actually encourage you to add more fills because you have the basic bones in your mobile, and then when you're faced with filling up more space, if you already have what you need, you're going to be tempted to add stuff that you don't. And also it's always easier to, to edit a paper and take away text than to invent it, but I don't know. Um, it could be. It could be depending on the person. Um, again, these are approaches. They're, they're not, you know, they're not something, uh, you know, use them, use them in a manner that you think is, is effective for you. So, yeah, you know, you can make an argument for that, and, and I, guess, I guess I'm not going to gonna dispute that. All right. Uh, and as you can see, in this particular case, we ended up at the same place going from di two different directions. So it's not as though one will produce results that the other one won't. All right, let's look at this and let's see the difference in this. Our web page should be almost the same with one difference. All right, and our one difference is that our media query is now applying to desktops, not to mobiles. So we flipped the we, we flipped the conditions under which the the media query applies. So the media uh, uh, query now applies when it's a screen and the device width is at least 601 pixels. We could make that some other number if we wanted to. But when it identifies as a screen and the minimum device width is at least 601 pixels. So now, in other words, and this is a good exercise to do when you're thinking through this, who gets this style sheet? Everyone, right? Because there's no media query on it. So that applies all the time. Who gets this style sheet? Only desktops. That's the actual the reverse of the other one. All right, where who got the first style sheet? Well, everyone did. Who got the second style sheet? Only mobile. These style sheets, everyone applies. Uh, um, um, get uh, get supplied uh, in, in all conditions as well. The Firefox fix one and all that. Now, you'll notice something else that's a little bit different. And that is, I incorporated the desktop style sheet into that little if statement for IE. All right. Why do you suppose I did that? Because it's only going to apply if Yes, that, that, that's absolutely true. But why do I need to do that? It's not advertising the minimum device for Internet Explorer, no? Uh, it's actually simpler than that. Internet Explorer, earlier versions of Internet Explorer, doesn't do media queries. So the media query, forget about it, doesn't know it. All right? So therefore, for Internet Explorer, because IE doesn't recognize media queries, this guy don't get applied, all right? And therefore, we kind of have to hedge our bets. And as, as was stated, gee, if they're running on Internet Explorer, they're not on a mobile device, they must be on a desktop, therefore apply the desktop spreadsheet, or spreadsheet, style sheet. Yes? It looks like it's commented out to me. That's the way that you can include conditional code in IE. It looks like comments, but that's conditional code for IE. So I couldn't do it like to the uh, link above. Repeat that, please. 
if I did the same thing with the exclamation point two dashes to the, <laughs> excuse me, the link above it. The Firefox one? Yeah, it would comment it out. Or no. <coughs> if you did this to that, <coughs> it would comment it out, right? All right. And finish that out. So, how does it... I just need to know if it's conditional. I add what I would normally call a comment to it. This syntax, what looks like an HTML comment, comment followed by a square bracket if, oh, is interpreted by Internet Explorer as an if statement. Okay, you, had, you explained it. I didn't notice that. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's not every comment's a conditional, a comment that looks like this. And the good news is other browsers ignore that because the other browsers think it's a comment, right? Oh, so right. Firefox or, or uh, uh, Chrome or whatever just, yeah, uh, got a comment here. Nothing to see here. Yes. <laughs> what does Windows Phone use? That is a good question. It's, it's like a, what they call like a runtime. Like it's their own, yeah, right? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, the, I, I don't know. Um, there would be the possibility that the one person on earth that has a Windows phone, this wouldn't work exactly perfect for him. I, I, think there, I think there actually is another test that you can put in to be sure. I, I don't remember that off the top of my head. I'm thinking that if they do run, it, it would not identify itself as being a version of IE less than 9 if it was a Windows phone, I think. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. This, they're, they're, this could be problematic. I'll, I'll give you that, whoever asked about that. All right, what I'd like to do now, so you see there's minor differences in the HTML. What are the differences? We flip the sense of the media query to now include that second style sheet if um, it's a desktop, not if it's mobile. And then we put in that fix for Internet Explorer to apply the, des the desktop style sheet. Okay, let's look now at the base, the new base and desktop style sheet. And the base style sheet will have in, in it the things that we want to apply to everyone, the barest bones version of it. I make the width of everything 100%, so I just get the one column. I set my font family. I set some colors. And I say that the image doesn't display. In the desktop version of the style sheet, then, I go in and overrule those parameters to the things that I just want to have for a desktop browser. In other words, I go in and I make the LIs block tag so that they stack vertically. I change the width of the nav. I change some link colors. I change the width of the section, and I display the images. Questions about this? Now again, this, this philosophy sort of works, you know. We're, we're going to take the same sort of approach even as we apply scripting to this problem, right? We, you know, we can, in, in there actually, um, actually you have a, a much greater degree of control. So you can choose to put content in or eliminate content based on whatever criteria you want. With just CSS rules, you kind of have a um, some degree of control, but you don't really have as fine-tuned a control as that, that you get when you start adding um, um, scripting into the mix. 
One thing to realize, even though I said the display is none, that image will still be downloaded on the phone, but it just won't take up any space on the screen. It won't clutter things. So that's a small um, downside. Questions about any of this? Yes? Now that, obviously, the, the, the big concern out there is IE8 and earlier. Mm -hmm. and God knows there's too many places that brag about how old their systems are. Um, for, for, like, right here at the college with, with the recent upgrade uh, to Windows 8, I mean, how would you technically test it here on, on, on these grounds with an older browser? I mean, I can go home, but I have an old computer. I can oh. run it on 8. Uh, but in terms of here, I want to be able I want to make sure my design works on 8 or 7. Is yeah, that's a good question. Um, typically what you might do is you might create, you might have like run virtual machines. So you might run a virtual machine um, that runs XP that has IE 5.0 or, so, or something, an earlier version of IE. And then you could test within the virtual machine. The other thing is... Pretty sure there's services that you can do. I know there's an Adobe Browser Labs, but I don't know yeah. if it's, uh, if it's, if it's free. Here we can go and we can test our page in a bunch of platforms. Let's pick. Pick on them. Showing this and There's tools like this that could do it. And again, they're not going to be um, necessarily. Um, I'll tell you what, let's go. Let's do this again. Let's cancel that. Let's go in and let's just ask for. Oh, I want to uncheck these. I was just going to pick a couple of them. Pardon me? This isn't the most like user friendly design. They shouldn't have it all unchecked and have you check the voice you want to get it. Was, there a, a yeah. space was, oh, was there a clear all? Yeah. There was? Yeah. Was there? Go down. It's like none. All right, there, there, there you go. go. Yeah, Let's okay. check this under IE 6.0. Oh, you've reached your quota. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you did have oh, the download go. button. There you go. Here we go. It's, it's showing me the page in these different browsers. And here it's showing what the page looks like in Chrome, for example. That's nice. Yeah. But you, yeah. 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 Oh, here's interesting. Looks a little different. This browser on Debian does not look right. Uh, now, in 
any anytime you have a, a situation like this, you have to wonder sometimes: is it the emulator or is it the actual code? So it, that might warrant further testing. All right, questions. All right, that's all I have for today. Who is going to land? Going once. All right. We'll see you next week. Remember that we do not have class on Monday.